Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. John Coleman and I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Liz Lister and um, finding out about all sorts of things medical. All things medical. Dr. Liz, good to see you again. Likewise. And I have, uh, I, I'm fascinated, uh, I'm just personally fascinated by the, the medical system in the U.S. Now, I'm old enough, as, as Art is, to remember uh, as a kid going, all the doctors were individual practitioners. Mm. You'd go to their office and they used to call it hanging up a shingle and opening up a practice. And today, of course, um, doctors are all members of a group. I think the smallest group I've had any contact with is about 10 doctors. Mm. Uh, but I'm today in San Diego County, I'm a member of um, Scripps Healthcare. And I, it's one of the largest in the country. They own a dozen hospitals. They have a thousand doctors. They have, I mean, they have groups upon groups and they're all associated with this Scripps thing. And I, I got to tell you, I, I don't know whether it's good or bad. What, where did this all begin? It's so interesting. That's very fascinating. And you're absolutely right. I think a lot of people have your experience, John, of dealing with a large system. That's all, an example of, of a very good example of a hospital system. And it's very interesting. I want to toss out the date, the year 1973. 1973, okay. almost 50 years ago, that is... Uh, kind of a pivotal time in terms of how medicine looked before, as you just described, and how medical systems and healthcare in the United States looks at this point in time. Okay, what so happened keep, in 1973. Keep, keep that in mind. 1973. Yeah. So we can go. It's it, the whole the history is very interesting. I love talking about this. So we'll try to keep it kind of brief and skimming over, but okay. we can go all the way back to 1850. That was the first time that anybody had any type of insurance or let's say reimbursement for, this was not for getting sick, but for having an accident. So huh. this was accident. The very first of this idea was done for accidents. People who worked on the railroads or steamboats if they had an accident, they would get some wage, lost wages reimbursed. All right, so we can kind of keep that as like a beginning. Okay. And then we'll say the late 1800s, the early 1900s is when we started to see the birth of the idea of a monthly payment, make smaller, small, let's say, regular payments, HMO type of arrangement, and be able to access a group of doctors or perhaps wow. a group of doctors out of one hospital. Wow. All right, so we're early looking- Early 1900s, wow. Yes, early 1900s, uh, there was a group in Washington DC, excuse me, in Washington State mm. uh, that was in one uh, line of work, a group in Texas that was a group of teachers. And they got together themselves in order to be able to pool their money, do monthly payments, and be able to have access to services at a particular hospital. All right. So All right, that so was it seems that the, these early plans were either for companies uh, to uh, keep or retain uh, <clears throat> employees uh, and, or uh, associations of related people like teachers in Texas who uh, wanted to provide for better than just going up to see their general, uh, the GP and paying money whenever they were sick. Yes, actually are a little bit distinct from what you just said. If this was groups of people, not employers quite just yet. Hmm. That comes right after. This is now gearing up, this is wartime. There was hmm. World War I, there was the depression, there was World War II, and different employers had different capacities to do these types of programs for their employees, right? If you had a really big wealthy company, you would be able to pay your employees, you would be able to pay people to work for you a lot more than what I could pay in my little small business. So I wouldn't be able to get employees. So there was a war labor board during all of this time that put a control on what you and I could each pay 
as an hourly wage. So what did people think of? They realized that offering something like a health insurance or a disability insurance could be a benefit. So we start to have the idea of employment benefits as a way to attract employees. Wow, what a change. You know, uh, Dr. Change. Liz, Art and I are in Southern California, and um, the Kaiser, during you mentioned World War II. During World War II, there was a big Kaiser steel plant out here in Fontana, um, about 70 miles east of LA. Kaiser Steel, at that time, was uh, making tanks and jeeps and things like that. They were a huge, huge company, and they are noted for um, taking care of their employees. They had their own health system right. for their employees. Yeah. And of course, today, Kaiser, I think it's called Kaiser Permanente, is a you know huge mega, um, I don't know if it's insurance or a health system or whatever it's called, but right. it's, it's one of the largest in the country. Absolutely. At the beginning. One of the largest and one of the oldest. That's exactly right. So yeah. now we're around the 30s, the 40s, and then forward a little bit to the 60s. So 1965 was mm -hmm. when President Lyndon B. Johnson signed into law the Medicare and Medicaid. Of course. All right. So we have Medicare for people 65 and older, and we have Medicaid for the poor. There's yeah. a lot more to it. It's really, really interesting because it also <clears throat> covers disabled people. It covers other particulars, but we've got the Medicare and we've got Medicaid signed into law. Right. And now we're just about back to that year that I said at the beginning, 1973. Okay. 1973 was a very big change. A couple of things happened. It was the beginning of, in medicine, a lot of people are familiar with the term DRGs, diagnostic diagnosis related groups. So wow. this is when we start to see codes codes for visits, codes for diseases. And of course, nowadays, well, we'll cover a little bit of what happened in between, but now everything is code driven. The yeah. way things are coded is determines the income of most doctors and most hospitals. And that began right around 1973. The right. other thing that happened in 1973 was a failed attempt by the federal government to really forward the idea of the HMO at the government level, right? We're still dealing with that today, right? Everybody talks about universal health care, Medicare for all, which I happen to think are very good ideas, uh, hard, hard to implement in a country that we're used to the way things have evolved which does not take care of everyone. We have way too many, we have millions of uninsured in this country, which we know increases the risk of dying. So we have a lot of challenges uh, and there's a lot of very interesting, I'm looking at some of my notes, uh, the different presidents, uh, starting with Nixon and then uh, going to uh, Reagan and then Clinton, all the things that we talk about now are topics that have been argued and debated for over 50 years. Uh, until we got the Affordable Care Act, which was presented in 2010 by President Obama, it did not get passed till 2014, right? And it was called Obamacare is, as a way to insult it, but it had a ring to it, so it caught on. And the idea, so there was a period of time uh, prior, in those years, where the number of uninsured Americans dramatically dropped, uh, and then it has increased and decreased. It's It's been a, a difficult uh, time of ups and downs. A lot of controversy, a lot of discussion uh, regarding how to take care of uh, all Americans. Well, this has really been great because uh, we've gotten a nice broad brush of where things started and sort of where they are today. Do you have thoughts on where we might be going? Yes, absolutely. A lot of changes are happening. As we all know, the pandemic changed a lot of things. There was the rise of telehealth. Uh, people had to develop a lot more coding for all of that. Uh, I want to say that I remember when Obamacare was being introduced, uh, the Affordable Care Act, and people were calling me and looking at me and saying, this is going to be the end of being able to be a doctor and practice the way you want. 
I, I figured that was wrong at the time. And sure enough, it has turned out to be completely wrong. There are a lot of factors that influence the way doctors practice medicine. However, I personally think that a commitment to ensure that every single person in our country has access to basic medical care that won't, it's the number one reason, the number one cause for personal bankruptcy in the United States uh, is medical expenses. And that's not right. That's my view on that. We need to fix that. What a fascinating history, huh? Yes, and we're in it. We're not at the end. It's yeah. a interesting story. Yeah, yeah. Yes. there's so much more we could discuss, uh, probably well beyond the parameters of today, such as uh, the ability to uh, uh, control uh, medical uh, prescription costs and things like that, where we know we know that uh, people get the same prescriptions overseas far less expensively than they do here. Uh, we're not allowed, I, uh, Medicare is probably, or, or the VA is not allowed to um, negotiate prices, even though they have millions and tens of millions of people that they should be able to in a in a, a capitalistic society, you'd be able to do that. Uh, isn't that strange? So uh, I think uh, the lobbyists have a lot to do with where healthcare is going. That's right. I made a note. Cost of medications. Excellent topic. We'll cover that. Great. Yeah. Uh, well, it's it. You listen. All of this is, as you point out, we're in the middle of uh, the history. That's it's, right. It's under great debate uh, in all quarters. And it's going to change again. You know, right. everybody's trying to make it better, and everybody's got a different view of what would be better. So, of course, it's going to be uh, fascinating to watch. And we have the we have the benefit of having Dr. Liz here to really watch it for us, and then come back and report from time to time. Here's where it's going, guys. Check it. Yep. Check out the putting new it, version. And putting it in all into perspective. I appreciate that. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.